scientists at the National Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta today released the results of a study which shows that the lifestyle of some male homosexuals has triggered an epidemic of a rare form of cancer. 1981, my life changed because the very first cases uh, of whatever it was were in friends of mine, my age group. People were starting to get sick and it would progress very rapidly. So you would see in a matter of two or three months, some close friend shrivel up and die. I remember a lot of the AIDS crisis because of the chronology of the Chelsea. Reading the first article in the New York Times about 41 homosexuals dying of this kind of mysterious disease, you know, in our apartment in the Chelsea Hotel. That deep-seated fear that it was the gay cancer. We were paying for all of our sins, all that crazy living and taking such wild chances and so forth. The fear of night sweats and for hearing about the first person I knew who was HIV positive, we didn't call it that. All these people dying around us in this extreme situation that no one was quite prepared for. Nobody was quite sure who was going to be left. AIDS decimated the cultural community of New York. Cultural community. There were so many people within the world of theater, art, music, dance, architecture, design, who were lost to it. I think nobody kind of knew how big it would get. There were many things that were going on simultaneously. There was the race to deal with it uh, in terms of medical research and treatments. And then parallel to that was sort of the political battle of simply making it known and acknowledging it, which you know, the, the government refused to do for so long. Reagan had gone on record very early on as being unalterably opposed to doing anything having to do with homosexuality. And the people he put in power in various health agencies all followed suit. Homosexuality is a sin. It is our duty to protect these people from themselves if we are forced to. The AIDS virus has no civil rights. How little people outside of the gay community paid heed to it for the, for the first few years. And I mean, how, how, how people just weren't listening. It took too long for it to get onto the radar screen. Everybody was tested, and, and we were both. Craig Lucas's uh, partner was a doctor, and he, he was a partner with a doctor who specialized in HIV at this period, was just starting. So we went to him. Sam and I both were diagnosed positive. We weren't uh, showing any signs of deterioration, but it was, it was terrifying because it looked then like everybody who was infected was going to die. Contracted cryptococcal meningitis. Then he started deteriorating rapidly. I was just couldn't bear it. I th it was ghastly. I couldn't do anything. But he did, Sam kept that kind of calmness. And then he started having seizures. I was taking care of him, and he was on intravenous six hours a day. And I had to give him shots in the stomach. And I was going just crazy. And Sam, you know, had barely a mind left. And that, that probably was the most traumatic thing for me of anything. You know, somebody you love and are close to, suddenly becoming this zombie. My cat, uh, Big Gray Puss, he and Sam sort of deteriorated at the same rate and at about the same time. And the cat died, and Sam took the cat and 
took it over to the to the vet to have it cremated. <laughs> that cat was like the spirit of their their time there at the Chelsea when when Great Puss died. It was really the end of something. <clears throat> he was taken to the hospital, St. Vincent's, <clears throat> and stayed there until he died. He died December 14th, 1993. I remember the date. Two days before my birthday. Before my birthday.